On this episode, we're gonna talk about millennials in the workplace, and if you're not a millennial, what you need to know in order to keep us around. Hey, what's going on everyone? Carlos here. Welcome to another episode of Real Talk, my all new series in which I interview interesting guests in the world of business and answer your social media questions. I'm coming at you once again from the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center here in San Francisco. And joining me to my left is my tag team partner, Ms. Jenna Dominique. Welcome back, to Real Talk. Back at it again. It back feels good at it again, to homie. be here and to cover a topic that I think is very relevant for both of us, but from different perspectives. Millennials in the workplace, right? Millennials, well, let's just jump right into it. What does it mean for you being a millennial in the workplace? I think sometimes on initial impact, it's like, okay, I'm the youngest person here, right? And you feel small at first, um, but you come in with so much passion and you're almost driven by that passion into that place. And so you, you wanna figure out where to put it, where to place it, what do I focus on? Um, and I think one thing that I've realized is most important for me being a millennial in the workplace is to feel like I'm creating an impact mm -hmm. and to feel like my work is valued and is really contributing to the entire organization and there's a benefit to it. Otherwise, I feel like I'm running, but I don't know where I'm running to and that's not a good feeling. So clarity and communication and not even a perfect path because no path is perfect, but knowing the end goal keeps me focused on what I'm supposed to be doing in my day to day. Have you seen a video, by, by the way, from Simon Sinek around millennials in the I've workplace? I've watched that video. I've watched that video a few times. I actually created a response to that video that is on YouTube. And the video that I created was actually received like very mixed results. There was a lot of people hating on it. And the funny thing is the people that were hating on the video and leaving negative comments, they were from non-millennials. Mm -hmm. And I think that unless you're a millennial yourself, you really don't necessarily know the challenges that millennials face, it comes off as maybe sounding entitled or bratty or spoiled, but I can attest to what you just said. So for the record, you're a younger millennial, you're 24, I'm 33, almost 34, and I can tell you since I started my career in 2002, up until maybe about five or six years ago, I was always in your situation. I was the youngest in the room, the youngest on the team. I remember having a job, I was 21 or 22 years old, I was already a manager at a bank, and my manager that I reported to literally told me to my face, don't ever tell anyone how old you are here. And I looked at her and said, well, why not? And she said, because people won't take you serious. And it's like, well, what about work ethic? What about you know, results that I, that I drive? Why would people not take me serious based on my age? Age is just a number. And quite frankly, at 21, I thought I could you know, really you know, carry myself no different than someone in their 30s or their 40s. So, that's the issue that I face early on. Now, now granted, you know, I've been very open about this. I didn't go to college. So I started my career at 18, 19 years old. I've always thought about myself as like being a younger guy, but really having an older soul. But I can tell you the challenges that I face along the way have been solely around just age. People not taking me seriously early on in my career because I was younger. And I can tell you it somewhat changes the older you get. But even being in my, my early 30s, when I work with people that are much older than me, I get this vibe of, well, I don't want to help this guy out. I don't want him to go ahead and put me out of a job. I don't want, he's already talented. I don't want to like help him be even like more talented than what he already is because then it's going to affect me and my status. I can attest to that, but I think my biggest struggle as a millennial is being a ninja, if you will, and being able to do multiple things and either not being able to do enough, right? So like not being able to have multiple different projects going on at one time, or them not knowing the value of having someone on their team that can do so many different things at one time. There's really something valuable, and I think that's one thing that millennials pride ourselves in, is being able to, to, to learn quickly, right? Like you, you get on social media, you can, you can log in, you can build it, whatever, and like that's pretty quick turnover, right? And then you just do it again for another one. And so I think we learn different things very quickly. Everything is so accessible. You can be a photographer mm -hmm. just on your iPhone if you wanted to, right? You can create content just on your iPhone if you wanted to. So there's so many different things. We have so much access. And then you think, well, I'm pretty good at this, right? Like I've built a following based off of this. And I think I can do this for a brand. And then you get in there and do it and then show them all the other things that you can do. And it just kind of gets packed into one thing. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, all of these positions are very different, right? 
And so I think I would play, you know, devil's advocate to some older folks out there and say, having a millennial on your team almost it decreases the need to have multiple people to do multiple things. You have one person who can kind of attack and use the same voice and same strategy on multiple different levels. Look at a millennial company. like a Swiss army knife. Exactly. That's what I like to say. Look at a millennial, no different than a Swiss army knife, someone that has different skill sets, different talents that you can tap into. And one of the things that you were alluding to is really you know, creativity and being able to grow your own following. You know, I, I, I run to that. I meet millennials all the time that are right around your age that have impressive you know, followings on their blog or on Instagram or on Snap, but the reality is they will never go into a job interview and be hired alone based on that. You know, I'll give you just a, a real life example. I've never been in a job interview where anyone has ever been truly impressed or amazed or wanted to hire me based on what I've done through my own personal brand. It's always been results driven, which as it should, companies are gonna go ahead and hire typically the best candidate in the room based on the results that they've achieved. However, when you're starting to look at a much younger, more entry level candidate, if they can go ahead and build and grow on their own and actually show the results, the results are results. And you know, numbers don't lie. Numbers definitely don't lie. And it really says something about someone who's at such a young age, right? But really wants to take this self-made route, if you will, right? Like in building their own following, in setting up their own camera, and setting up the shot, and having beautiful images. A, lo a lot of times, you, you, we really don't know what goes on behind the scenes that this one person is trying to do and accomplishes by themselves. And there's really value in that, right? Again, that goes back to having multiple skills and, be, and, and having the Swiss Army knife capability. So no, maybe you don't have a lot of experience on your resume, but if I told you all of the things that I did when I backpacked the world and traveled for two years, I've managed a budget, right? Like I've had to interact and meet with new people, right? I've had to cross language barriers. A lot of these skills that you would value that would be on a resume, but I've just built for myself through my brand, through my own passion. And there's something really, really, really valuable that is such a crucial addition I think to teams at, at all companies. Agreed. Let's talk about the, the top three things that are critically important to millennials out there in the workplace. And I'm going to go ahead and start by saying autonomy. And that's really being empowered and being given a runway to do your job. The, the worst feeling in the world is to be micromanaged and to be hired to do a job and then basically be told each step of the way what you have to do. You know, oftentimes, anytime I get hit up by a recruiter, by a company that wants to you know, bring me in and interview me for a job, they always ask me, what's most important to you in your career? And I tell them, from, from where I'm at right now in my career, it's autonomy. I want to be able to know, going into a job, what your expectations are, and I'm going to go in and I'm going to do the job. I don't need to be handheld. I don't need much supervision. I just need to be told, what is the mission? And be told, this is the team, these are the resources, this is the budget, go do it. Go make it happen. For me, I call that owning your own time. Right? Like, I want to own my time. Okay. I want to structure my day. I want to say that in the morning, I think best in the morning. So I'm going to write in the morning, right? And then I will do our scheduling later in the afternoon. I've realized the importance for me is like looking at the entire month of the calendar and saying these are the things that are coming up on the calendar so that I can start preparing for those things well in advance, but on my time, right? And so I agree with you when you say that having autonomy is extremely important. I think the second thing that's really important is knowing the value add that you bring to your team. So knowing that because you're in this position, we selected you because of the talents that you have, and this is the value add that you bring, and these are like the expectations or goals that are related to that, right? Because we, know, we want to challenge you, but we also want you to feel like you are growing personally for your brand and for who you are outside of this workplace, and so that you know that we believe in your skills and we believe in the, all of the things, the diverse array of things that you can bring to our team. And that's really where creative brainstorming and all of those things really, they, they get even better mm -hmm. because you allow people to participate and drop in ideas and bring to the things to the table that never would have been brought to the table before. Would you say that number two, Jenna, the second most important thing, or not necessarily you know, in order of importance, but what's really important to millennial is mentorship? within an organization? I think mentorship is extremely important. I think it's important for, even in my personal experience, like I want my executives to acknowledge me, right? Mm -hmm. I want them to give me feedback. I, I, I went, go into meetings and I ask them, what's working right now? You know, how can we get faster, better, stronger? And if you were me, what's one thing you would be doing differently? 
So mentorship is extremely important because you want that guidance. You want to feel empowered, but you also want to feel like someone is coaching you mm -hmm. and, and giving you the keys to get where they are one day as well. Yeah, I think that's something that's often lost at organizations nowadays is you know, they hire busy worker bees to go in and do a job, but they're not necessarily hiring with the mindset of, we're putting this person in this role today, but we envision them having the talent and the skill set, and as long as they perform, within a year from now, we're gonna move them up to the next rank, or the next rank. You know, it seems like a lot of companies, what they do is they hire you specifically based on salary, then kind of keep you in the same level or same job, but then they give you a little bit of bump and pay every year instead of actually giving you more responsibility, you know, bigger team, uh, more autonomy even. So I'm with you. I think mentorship is extremely important. I think when I look personally at a company to go work for, I look at, what am I going to get out of the full package? You know, the reality is that I'm not going to retire from this company. At my age today, I'm not going to work 30 years at one company. That's just, it's not realistic to think that way. It's not like when our parents were coming up that they would get a job and that would be like the only job they would ever know. So just knowing how this works, I look at the big picture out there and it's not just money, it's not just title, it's what am I gonna be able to walk away from and put on my resume? And a big part of that is also the people that I'm gonna have access to. So am I gonna have a leader that I'm working with that I'm gonna be able to learn from him or her? Am I gonna have that coach or that champion in him or her that once I leave this company or in two or three years, that he or she is still gonna be an advocate for me and help me throughout the rest of my journey. Yeah, I think that's extremely, extremely important because again, we're not thinking about just in the now and what you're doing right now, but you're building for the mm -hmm. future, especially at such a young age, being at 24, right? Like this is not it for me, right? So in terms of shaping that vision, I would like to tap into as many mentors and as many people who've been where I have been before as I can. And what do you look for in a mentor? I look for someone that's relatable, right? I look for someone who, they don't have to have the same exact journey as me, but they, they should be able to understand my journey and where I've come and where I'm at now. I look for someone who has vision, right? And um, can project even the things for you. So they hear you talking and hear your story and you're like, okay, so basically this is what you're gonna do next, right? And you're like, I didn't even think of that. That hadn't crossed my mind. So someone who almost like sets the path for you. So even if that's six months from now, it's like that seed has already been mm -hmm. planted in me. I look for someone who's going to plant seeds. And I, I think another big part of it is someone who's, who's healthy. I think in general, relationships are important to have with people who are healthy and take care of mm -hmm. themselves. So someone who is mentally healthy, emotionally stable, mm -hmm. right? Like folks who are healthy and take care of themselves and their body because I value that. So I want to be connected with other folks who are healthy and can support me, not just in the workspace, but like give me tips for other mm -hmm. parts of my life to stay a well-rounded individual and well-rounded employee and, and an even better contribution moving forward. What would you say is the third, you know, so we're, we talk about autonomy, we talk about access to mentorship and coaching. What would you say is the third most important aspect that millennial looks for? I think that millennials really look for a workplace that is well-rounded, again, and supports all aspects of their lifestyle, mm -hmm. specifically travel. Okay. Like my millennial friends who work at tech companies that allow them to travel like without limits, that, that is like the big ticket, right? Because people want to go. They really do. It, it's deeper than autonomy and saying, okay, I'm going to work remote So you're saying there's day. companies that give you unlimited PTO yes. and vacation time, yeah. or they actually send you on a trip? They give you unlimited PTO and vacation time, and I have a friend who works for Facebook, and he's in Thailand and was in Thailand with his team, having a great time. Okay. Right. And so, but last company month culture. he was just in Cuba. Exactly. Okay. Company culture. But last month he was just on a trip in Cuba. Right. So he has the ability to take travel for himself, but also in his role, he's traveling with work as well. So travel is just important. Folks want to move around. Mm -hmm. we, we really do. We want to go to somewhere else and experience the work culture there. Right, or for me, I, I, I realize a lot of my work is just on the computer. You don't really have to see my face to know that I'm working because right. the results, it's still going out. Right. So I wanna be able to, if, I, if I'm in going to New York for the week, if I can get work done on the road because I know there's work to be done right. and because I can do it right. and manage it, I wanna be able to do those things. And I don't want there to be a, again, the question of like, is she or is she not, like, it, trust. Right. Trust that I'm here and you're paying me to do my job. And at any moment that I'm not delivering, then okay. But like come in with some level of trust, autonomy, and the ability and flexibility to move around because I want to move. Yeah, I think I agree with you. I think company culture is extremely important. And typically what I'll do is when I am going through the interview process, 
I enjoy going into the office to actually take a look at the company culture. And you know, for anyone out there that is either interviewing for a job or will you know, be interviewing for a job, make sure that at some point you make it a priority to physically go into the office where you'll be working, go see where you'll be sitting. Go ask, like if you're interviewing for a marketing job, go ask if you can see where the marketing department sits. You'll be able to get a feel and a read for company culture very quickly. And you'll just be able to see if employees love what they do based on reading body language, based on seeing if they interact with one another. I know a lot of job interviews, you'll go to them and they just take you to where HR is or they'll take you to a boardroom. And like it's very swiftly, like they'll bring you in, they don't want anyone to know that you're there interviewing, they don't even give you a tour, they interview you and then you're out. And all you saw was like a receptionist in a front lobby and that's it. I would literally challenge that employer, whether it's HR or the hiring manager, whoever you're in, you interview with, ask them, can I have a tour of the facilities? And if they ask you why, just let them know. You know, company culture is really important to me and I'd really like to get, you know, a tour and get a, a feel for where I'll be working potentially. And again, make sure you observe where are you gonna be having lunch? How's the vibe? How's the cafeteria if there is one? How are people actually working with each other? If everyone's just in like cubes and silos and not having much dialogue, that should tell you something about the company culture. Get a read for things like that because the worst thing that you can possibly do is go work for a company that on the surface is a well-known iconic brand but on the inside, it's a complete disaster. Because that complete disaster, it, 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 it go, boils down to nothing but like a personality fit and, and, and that unexpected, right? Like not asking that question for the tour so you can actually envision yourself in that space. And that's, so, that's such an important part of the hiring process even, is that I can visualize myself walking through these doors every day. Right? Mm -hmm. I can visualize myself eating lunch in that cafeteria. I can see myself sitting at the desk with these other folks who are working in my department. It's important to be able to see yourself and manifest those things, right? And I think that really sets a positive tone for your work ethic in that workspace and how you show up to work every day. Jenna, so we talked about, just want to recap, full autonomy. We talked about access to mentorship and coaching, and we talked about company culture. If you are a company out there that wants to attract and retain millennial talent, these are the three things that you should probably be focusing on. To say the least. To say the least. Jenna, where can the viewers out there learn more about you and connect with you? I say the best place to connect with me is on Instagram at Jenna underscore Dominique. And I definitely want to plug the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center. Connect with them as well. Follow them on Twitter at the center and sign up for the newsletter so that you can find out about all the classes, free classes that they host here in San Francisco. Jenna, thank you so much for being on another episode of Real Talk. Thank you to all the viewers out there. If you enjoyed watching this episode of Real Talk, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, drop a comment below. And thank you to INC International Concepts, available exclusively at Macy's for suiting me up with these threads that you see here on Real Talk. Until next time, peace.